Rafferty, and I'm here with Das Sport. And this is uh, the 944 GTR that I drive from 1987. originally started life as the seventh of one of seven of the Dave Clem fab car built 944 GTRs. So it was the last of the last. It was intended for an individual named Chet Vincenz, owned a company called Electrodyne, which was an automotive parts supplier in Alexandria, Virginia. And what happened is uh, Chet was, as I understand, an individual that was a on and off again IMSA team racer, gentleman racer. And the car was built uh, by Dave Clem in Cummings, Georgia, at his company, Fab Car. And it ended up in the hands of Al Holbert test driving it at Road Atlanta upon completion. They sent it to Clem. Clem made some modifications. Ultimately, it ended up at Lee Dykstra's. Uh, and they made some modifications to the car shortly after Chet Vincenz drove it. Elliot Ford Robinson and uh, Al Holbert retested the car and we're very satisfied with it. I was at an auction, of course. I was selling cars at an auction, the Porsche 75th with the great guys at Broad Arrow Auctions. And it ended up that I ended up selling three cars that day. And later, um, they had called me on the phone from the floor and said, we had this fantastic 944. It's right up, you know, your interest area. And uh, don't you need to spend some of the money you just made selling cars. So I bought it in June. I uh, was able to spend a few hundred hours on the car to get it ready here for Rensport and uh, a few hard-earned dollars along the way. It's one of the seven 944 GTRs uh, built by Dev, Dave Clem, Fab Car in Georgia. Uh, kind of like the peak of the heyday of just madness and horsepower and outside of the box thinking, you know, silhouette race cars with tail lights that resemble a street car and a windshield that, you know, kind of fits a street car. Uh, but other than that, kind of like a blank canvas, you know, tube chassis, just really pushing the rule books and the boundaries. The chassis is really special being a tube chassis. Um, again, going back to what we talked about earlier, outside the rule book, you know, Dave Clem was an incredible engineer and fabricator known for building some really neat cars, some single seat, air-cooled 911s that had some pretty good fame, were very successful. Um, you could almost consider it like a NASCAR car almost with the, with the tube chassis design, but the engineering of it, how everything ties into it, the suspension pickup points, I mean, it's kind of, you throw away the streetcar platform and you just really engineer starting with the chassis. You know, it's all square tube, round tube, and kind of engineering all of that into it. You know, the A-arm suspension that it has, really trick and kind of ahead of its time, you know. Factory Porsche was doing that with the 935s and the 962s. Also, the accessibility of it. You can completely pull every body panel off and it'll look like a go-kart. So it's a two and a half liter inline four cylinder turbocharged. Um, outside of that, no real ties to the two and a half liter kind of that was in the 944 turbos. Kind of a brainchild from Wysock and, you know, and dial built. So kind of looks like, you know, it's a little bit similar to the, the streetcar stuff, but really a, a well-built, thought-out machine. It runs the original Motronic unit, sort of from a 962. So it has a very uh, mechanical feel to it. Um, I also drive a GT3 Cup car, which is a very drive-by-wire sort of car. This car, it's like there's a lot of mechanicalness that's waiting to catch up with your brain and your foot, you know? So it's pretty special. I can just brush the brakes and get back on the gas. Um, the car is quick to respond. It spools up very fast. Um, the turbocharger on this is massive, so you'd think it would take a long time to get rolling down the road, especially part throttle out of a corner or at the apex. What it ends up doing is it has two wastegates in a very sophisticated manner. So it, it kind of causes the car to have some boost at the low end and holding that boost so it's always there for you. But then when you really you know, put your foot down, it just puts the screws down. I mean, it just takes off. And you better be prepared and you know, have your six-point harness on. I mean, it's like the best feeling on earth. You know, it's like, it's like someone's giving you a boot in the butt, you know, so it's, and it's to, to try to get moving and just really have a good time. It's kind of a, it's a very visceral experience for me. I'm a 944 Turbo Cup 
showroom stock driver, um, to come into this car with just the amount of power it has and the boost and but also the same sensibilities that the 944 showroom stock car has. It has like a very balanced feel, um, the 50-50 weight balance. It has much larger tires. It probably could put two of the 944 Turbo Cup tires together for one of the rear GTR tires. So it's, it's just incredible. The grip, um, the just rawness of the car. Also, it has like a very go-kart feel because it's all tube frame construction, right? No Porsche tub sort of under all this Porsche goodies that it has. Um, so basically it's uh, with the spherical bearings and the monoballs and all the tubes, it's, it's very, very stiff, but at the same time, the car works and it's very pliable to take through the corners. So it's a fantastic drive. I think preparation, you know, is, is the key to anything. So I think what we do is we get a car that we don't know, we take it completely apart, they put it all back together, and they don't take any chances with anything. So I think that's, you know, anything in life, if you're ready for it, you know, you're ready for it. If you're not, you're not. I think the car is built in such a way and such improved over the, the evolution of it, um, especially with Chet Vincenz with ownership. He had, you know, the car, you know, product company, Electrodyne, that ended up doing a lot of um, tweaks to it over the time. It went out to Lee Dykstra, like I mentioned. He did a lot of tweaks. Dave Clem was a big fan of the square tubing. This car has a lot of additional round tubing added to it for stiffness and strength. One of the cool things about it, and almost proof in the pudding to the stiffness of it, it runs a glass windshield. So talk about flex, right? No flex, windshield doesn't break, you know, so it's pretty cool. Things like uh, the brakes are from a 962, the uprights are 962, the wheel bolts and the wheel screw is 962. So it has the big 90 millimeter socket to you know get the wheel on. It's like the wheels and tires are the BBS with the Michelin tire it runs. Um, the suspension geometry shares a lot of the same bits and pieces, but it is all monoball and things like that. So it's quite a departure. Porsche, you know, they had the 924D production car, right, for SCCA here in the U.S., which had the 924 tub with the wider bodywork and the two-liter motor and such. A lot more Porsche parts. This car was built to sort of go against the Camaros and the Corvettes. They really wanted that GTO status in the racing, especially in IMSA with the new class coming about. So, Alex Springer was one of the you know founding members of Andile uh, with his initials, you know. Um, so he was there at the track with us, ran Porsche Motorsports. He was involved with the development of these cars. I mean, someone so deeply rooted in Porsche that when we had the bonnet off the car, we were chasing a boost issue that we had. He asked me for a piece of paper. He just drew up the schematic. And he was like, this is how the, the vacuum line should be run. This is how the manual boost controller should be tied into these two wastegates right here. Why don't you pull these lines off? Go drive the car. Don't get on it real hard because it's going to make a lot of boost. You know, To have someone that designed it and really knows it. And he was like, I bet you if you pull the cover off, that ECU, my handwriting is going to be on the back. My handwriting is probably on the back of that motor. It's, it's when you when you get to experience something like that, you're like, wow, that is special. That man, of all of his success, of all of his cars, of all his accomplishments, you know, he still fondly remembers that car. It's it's, it's neat, and I think that's the Porsche community and the Porsche family. It's all love. I grew up as a, uh, you know, in 1972, I was in the pits of Penske Racing and in Indianapolis 500, the first year they won the Indy 500. My father was on the team. And what happened is, I think there's a picture I have in the trailer of myself, my father, and a close family friend. And we're sitting there on the wall. I'm like three years old. You know, I think it's just been in my ears all my life. It's also why I can't hear that well right now, you know, I'm sure. But I think Trans Am, it's just the fierceness of Trans Am. It's the fierceness of IMSA GTO at the time. And just the ingenuity and the cleverness of everyone to, within the rules, make the beastiest car they could. And the width of this car, this 944, right? Over 100 inches wide across the back, you know, the giant, you know, overstatedness in a sense, the big fender flares, the rawness of it, and just the overall width, the height, all the ingenuity, the engineering that goes into it. And I think the legacy, I think, of my father at Penske in the 70s 
um, just hearing those cars and you know, just being nostalgic about that attracted me to this car. You know? Have you ever heard it run? I mean, come on. <laughs>